But here, just few words about anaerobic organism that if there is serious anaerobic infections, which, organ, which drugs you will prefer? Even though it is not related with our lecture, but clinically it is extremely important that if you have serious anaerobic infections, which antibiotics you will use? Look, above the diaphragm, we usually prefer calindamycin. Calindamycin. In my other lectures, I have given rational for all these things. Lectures on anaerobic infections. So above the diaphragm, we prefer calindamycin. But if we have anaerobic infection below the diaphragm, we prefer metronidazole. And if someone asks you that there is above the, above the diaphragm infection like gingival infection by anaerobic organism, orodental, oral, orodental anaerobic infections or mixed infection, clindamycin should be the part of re, uh, antibiotic regime regimen or respiratory infections, right? Respiratory infections anaerobic, you must think of clindamycin, right? But remember one thing, above the diaphragm, if there is anaerobic infection in the central nervous system, clindamycin cannot cross blood-brain barrier. There, we are forced to use metronidazole. But preferably, above the diaphragm, we use clindamycin. Why we use clindamycin? Because above the diaphragm, organisms are coming from the oral cavity. And most of the oral cavity anaerobes are susceptible to clindamycin, but many of them are not susceptible to metronidazole. Metronidazole. Metron, metronidazole. But below the diaphragm, anaerobic infection, which may be intra abdominal abscesses, anaerobic, mixed, or female genital tract infections, or any anaerobic infections, there we use metronidazole preferably because the organism, anaerobic organism, they are coming from gastrointestinal system which most of them are susceptible to metronidazole. But is there any drug combination that we can be used for anaerobic infection and it does not matter infection is above the diaphragm or below the diaphragm? Yes, listen my question carefully. Above the diaphragm, anaerobes Think of clindamycin below the diaphragm, think of metronidazole. But if anaerobic infection anywhere, then we have special combination and the combination is, all of you know that, that is moxacillin, moxa, okay, very simple, we can say beta lactam, yes, beta lactam antibiotic, lactam, Beta lactam antibiotic plus beta lactamases. Lactamase, beta lactamase inhibitors. Beta lactam antibiotic with beta lactamase inhibitor. For example, moxicillin with clavulonic acid combination. This can be used, it can be used, augmentin, it can be used for anaerobic infection. Regardless of it is anaerobic infections are above the diaphragm or below the diaphragm. And the last question is extremely important. There is a very special group of antibiotic which can be used for anaerobic bacterial infections which are very serious infections and they are anywhere in the body we say those drugs have very broad spectrum anaerobic coverage. Those drugs have the most effective drugs for anaerobic infections anywhere in the body. But we only use that drug reluctantly, sparingly, very carefully, only in very serious anaerobic infection. Even though they are very broad spectrum and very effective. Why that drug is used so carefully? Because we don't want that 
resistance in microbe against that drug group should increase rapidly because in anaerobic infections, serious infections, that group of drugs act as a life-saving drug, right? Anyone who knows the name of that drug? Carbapenems. That group is? Carbapenem group. Carbapenem group, which may include imipenem, miropenem, doripenem, and many others. But remember, carbapenem group, please don't use liberally. Whenever you see, you suspect anaerobic infection, just guess, give uh, carbapenems. No. Try to manage that with clindamycin or metronidazole or with beta-lactam and beta-lactamase inhibitors. Because we don't want that microbes become too much resistant against the carbapenem. Because recently reports are coming, many of organisms are producing a special type of beta-lactamase enzyme which is called carbapenem. Oh, look, as beta lactamases, as beta lactamases, we destroy the penicillin, we call them penicillinases. Then there are beta lactamases which destroy the cephalosporins more than benzyl penicillin. Those beta lactamases are called cephalosporinases. cephalosporinases. So there are many. Drug, many enzymes which are produced by different microbes to, to destroy beta lactam antibiotic, right? It, they may be functionally, functionally penicillinases, such beta lactamases which are penicillinases, they actually destroy penicillins more than other beta lactams. You know, there are four beta lactam group of antibiotic penicillins, phallosporins estrionam and, and carbapenems, monobactams and carbapenem. Now penicillinases more effectively destroy penicillins and phallosporinases, those bacteria which produce phallosporinases, they destroy phallosporins more effectively than benzyl penicillin. And due to use of Carbapenems, now some of the organisms have started producing carbapenemases. Very dangerous carbapenemases. And once a microbe start producing enzyme carbapenemase, it means which group of antibiotic it will destroy. Carbapenemases, of course they will destroy carbapenems, but there is some trick, that is why I asked this question. Carbapenemases, of course, they destroy carbapenems, but unfortunately, they destroy all beta lactams almost. They destroy penicillins, they destroy phallosporins, they destroy uh, monobactams, and they also destroy carbapenems. So, my very special request to all of you that when there's anaerobic infection, if it is not life threatening, don't use carbapenems. Keep the carbapenems for very severe anaerobic infections. Let's have a break, and after that, we'll delve into detail that. How aminoglycosides enter and kill. Aminoglycosides are bactericidal. How they enter and kill the gram negative bacilli, which are aerobes. Right? See you later. Thank you.